Good morning. Hello, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Good morning, everyone. Just gonna give it a few seconds for you guys to join and then we'll dive in. So grab your cup of coffee, grab your water. Come on, come on and join. So good morning. I am Dr. Trisha Pingle and this is your morning checkup and normally I have a prepared topic and today um, I just want to check in with you guys. I want to check in with on how you guys are doing. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, energy floating around no matter where you fall. It doesn't matter, no matter what, how you voted, no matter what's going on in your state, I think all of us are feeling a little bit anxious and we talked about that yesterday. and gave some tips and you know I always find that when things like this happen like when the world is kind of in a buzz a little bit um, there's certain things that I do just to kind of stay grounded to stay optimistic to try and just power through with some positivity and so I wanted to just kind of take a moment to share with you guys what I did this morning and how I'm trying to get through everything and then also just see how all of you are coping and if you guys have any skills to share with others. Um, I suspect that, um, you know, everyone's a little bit on edge today, right? No one knows what to believe or where to believe or what to look at or what, I mean, it's just kind of like, it's craziness, right? It's full of craziness. Um, and um, so, this morning, what I did is, you know, obviously last night I was kind of following stuff and, you know, I talk a lot about how to stay off your phone and, you know, and then here comes an election, right, where all of us are looking at media or the phone or our computer or whatever and, you know, last night I, I got ready for bed and I thought, okay, I don't, this isn't going to be decided tonight anyway, so I'm just going to log off because just staring at a phone or staring at the news isn't necessarily helping me. So. I um, got a good night's sleep, and when I got up this morning, I got my coffee, you know, I go outside, I kind of chat with my family, I tried to really just remind myself of my roots, who I am, um, you know, how much I love my family and the people around me, and how no matter what happens outside of my household, um, no matter what happens nationally, no matter what happens with my neighbors, no matter what happens, it doesn't really matter because the only thing that I really have control over is how I treat others and the values that I instill upon my family. And I think um, <clears throat> that was kind of how I started my day is I thought, you know what, I need to reframe this. You know, I need to sit down and I need to recognize that I voted, <clears throat> you know, and, and there's not much more I can do outside of that. Now it's just watch and wait and whatever the outcome is you know I'll find a way to um, make it uh, favorable to me so that was kind of my tips was just sitting down taking a moment to breathe put your feet in the grass you know go outside you know think of all the things that you're grateful for and don't immediately go to pessimism and this goes for everybody it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you fall on it doesn't matter you know, whether the outcome is going along where you want it to go or not. It, it really, the bottom line is, is watching it and allowing all that stuff to penetrate us sometimes is more harmful than just taking a step back and just waiting, you know, just kind of waiting it out and seeing where it goes and then make the best decision you can. So I just want to open this up to you guys. I wanted you guys to share some of your tips. What did some of you do this morning? Do any of you have any guidelines that you can share for how you get through times like this? You know, this isn't the first time we've gone through stuff like this. We all survive. You know, we go through we go through elections every well, every two, but every four year major elections every four years, and you know, uh, we always find a way to pull through. So, what do you guys do? How are you today? If you guys are willing to talk, you know, I figured it just doesn't um, necessarily. Um, warrant a real formal topic today. I thought it was just better. I mean, I'm human just like you are. I'm going through what you guys are going through. I'm watching all of everything you guys are watching. At this moment, everybody in America is watching the exact same thing. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Good for you, Shannon. Shannon says this is the first time she's looked at her phone today. Uh, I think that's great. I think, um, you know, right now it's no, there's no point in sitting there and watching every moment. 
This is one time to back away from your phone and just say, look, we're not going to know for a few days anyway, so, you know, let's turn it off. Nurtured Nature said she turned off her TV. They said they turned off their TV. That's great. Kelly is going to the beach. I am jealous. No beaches here in Arizona. I would like to go to the beach. Um, Brandon just listened to your Irish music. Really? What do you listen to? I'd love to learn more about Irish music. I listen to French music quite a lot. That does make me happy. I listen to French music when I cook. It reminds me of my mom. It reminds me of my grandma. It just reminds me of a lot. Um, Vic was jogging in my basement, watching the news and feeling great. That's good. That's good. I think, you know, we spend so much time, like I talked to you guys so much about like how we interpret. Um, hey, Jeff, how are you doing? <laughs> Having coffee and listening to me. Thanks, Jeff. I think I, I have someone on Instagram, Nurture Nature, saying there's only so much we control. And I think that's something very, very important. Like I said, the only thing I can control is how I treat other people and the values that I still instill upon my kids. Um, it really doesn't matter what I think politically. It really doesn't matter what I think about other people. I think... It really just has to do with how I treat other people and the respect that I have for other people um, and how I allow um, uh, things to interpret in my brain, right? I think we all know that overstimulation, by this point, if you watch me regularly, I think you've got it down, that if you're overstimulated by your phone or media, you're going to have a poor stress response and that poor stress response is going to lead to problems. So how do we avoid that when things like this happen? This is a pretty big external stress, right? It's like being on pins and needles, right? I think for me, like as a person, one of the most stressful things, and I don't know if you guys agree, but one of the most stressful things for me is uncertainty. I don't like uncertainty. <laughs> I, don't, I feel very uncomfortable uncertainty. I'd almost rather have something go the wrong way or what I interpret to be the wrong way but be certain than uncertainty. I don't like, I don't like things in the air. I, I like to, you know, nail it down. I like to, to know what I'm dealing with. Because then I can adjust, then I can reframe, right? It makes sense. If you know the outcome, you can change the way you interpret the outcome. You can reframe the outcome. You can find positivity in the outcome. You can find acceptance in the outcome. But when there's no outcome, ah, that drives me nuts. <laughs> you know, it really does. It drives me nuts. I just want to know. Okay, what do I need to know? What do I need to do? You know? Um... So I appreciate you guys showing up today. I figured there probably wouldn't be too many of you out there today, right? Uh, lots to think about, lots to watch. So good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, so if you guys have, so let's see, I did that. I went outside, took uh, outside, looked at my plants to take your mind off everything. Yeah, I kind of chatted with my kids. My kids were a little... Um, well, my nine-year-old didn't care, but my 12-year-old, you know, is getting to that point where he kind of notices what's going on in the world and he asks lots of questions and I foster that. I think um, education and discussion is so important. I think it doesn't matter if the viewpoint's the same. I actually encourage my kids to look at both sides of the argument. I encourage them to consider it. Um, I encourage them to listen to others and then come up with their own conclusion and then find a way to work with it. You know, we're not always happy. Um, in many different situations, we're not always happy. So how we, I think the, the truth to a person um, is how we handle adversity, how we rise above adversity, how we treat others. I think it shows someone's true character. So regardless of whether things go your way, um, you know, try to show some true character today. But that's really all we have control over. You have control over what you do, but you don't really have control over what anyone else does, right? Uh, Debbie turned off the media, ate a healthy breakfast. All right. Taking a walk in the country. And praying, things you can control. Absolutely. Good job. You guys are doing great. My cat seems cool with everything. Yeah, so does Pig. Piggy. Piggy was just here too. Pet therapy. You guys ever used pet therapy? Pets are great for stress, right? They don't care who wins the election. Come here, Piggy. Do you want to come here? Only if she gets food, right? Oh. There you go. Good girl. That's all she cares about, right? Wouldn't that be nice? 
I like to be in control. Deb, yeah, see, that's a problem when you want to be in control, right? I used to be exactly the same way. I just wanted to control everything. And I think, you know, what's interesting is grief and loss of people when you had no control over it taught me that sometimes we just don't have any control. There's only so many things we can control. And if we try to control everything, we're never going to be happy because you just can't. It's just, it's literally impossible. There's only so many things that are truly in our control. Come on, come get it. They want to say hi. Come get it. Um, so, oh, there she is. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Turn the news off. June, turn the news off. Used my essential oils and rescue remedy, drinking stress ease tea. Good for you. But it does show a lot of us are under stress right now, right? Is there anyone who's not stressed out right now? I want your tips. <laughs> How are you not stressed? You know, are there any of you out there that are just like, eh, whatever, it'll be fine. Right? You? Yeah. Can you guys hear her? She's grunting. <laughs> I can't see you, but maybe it's my phone. I'll catch up later. You can't see me? Oh, anyone else having that trouble? Good morning. So yeah, I mean, for those of you that are just joining in, I'm just checking in with you guys today. It's a bit crazy. Right? It's a bit out there. A lot of us are feeling stressed and I'm just curious what people are doing this morning for their morning routine. And I think today um, I'm just going to keep a positive outlook. I'm going to remind myself that this is just a moment in time and no matter what happens, we'll find a way, right? We always do. Survival of the fittest. Those that find a way will survive. So we basically have a choice to let whatever happens take us down or we have a choice to rise above it and just keep moving forward. And I think that's the route I'm going to take. Um, you know, I, I don't think getting emotional or grieving over anything or worrying is helping anybody at this point. Yes, they are. We just drove for about four hours last night to purchase a two-month-old male Shih Tzu. Aww. And he is absolutely amazing. We love him and have already done so much for us with his loving personality. That's great, Matthew. What did you name the pup? What's the name? And you're very welcome. Vic says, not stress. Life is great. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Nana went to the gym. All right. That's what I need to do <laughs> today. That's exactly what I need to do today. Nobody can see you on Facebook, Biggie. The Biggie. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, I just wanted to check in with you guys today. I figured there wouldn't be a huge room in your brain for an overwhelming topic on health today. I thought we might be better served just by checking in. And I just wanted you guys to know that I'm thinking of all of you, that I'm here, you know, to help you reframe, to help you think about different ways to get through this. And no matter what happens today, tomorrow, the next day, I guess up until the 10th or so, uh, we, we all get through things together. That's the beauty of humanity, um, is being grateful and I just encourage you to try to keep an open mind. Piggy is very relaxed. She doesn't care who wins the election, do you? As long as there's no uh, proposition that takes away her dog food, she's, she's pretty happy. <laughs> right? Yes. There is actually a discipline called pet therapy. I don't know if you guys saw that live a couple months back, but there actually is where they use pets to calm your mind. So if you have a little, uh, a little pet, uh, just take a look at their outlook today. They're not paying any attention, right? Uh, you're torn between Tiger, Snickerdoodle, and Tinker. Well, I guess maybe it will reveal itself. Do you guys want to know what Piggy's name was originally? Bacon. We were going to name her Bacon. And every time we called Bacon, it didn't work. And we ended up just calling her Piggy. Come here, little Piggy. And there we go. Oh, yes, I know. That's your name. And now her name is Piggy. It's Piglet, formally. Started as Piglet, then went to Pig, then became Piggy. You know. <laughs> she does really snort, absolutely. Uh, you should learn, learn from Piggy. Yeah, we should, right? I think here's an opportunity. So when, I, when I'm ever faced with adversity or I'm faced with something that I'm not too sure about or faced with uncertainty, what I try to do is I try to look for the opportunity, um, an opportunity to grow, you know? Um, 
And uh, I think we can learn a lot from our animals and from young children that aren't really seeing the impact of it. Um, I think our school age children are feeling it this year because it's being talked about. And you know, when I was a, when I was when I was seven years old, people didn't talk to me about the election, right? We certainly weren't talking about it in our third grade class. Well, now they are, right? So now we're bringing the kids into our stress today. And I told my kids today when the school went to school, I said, "Look, just smile. Just get through your day." Like, don't worry about it. You're too young to have to worry about these types of things. It's not worth your energy. It's not worth the expended expenditure of energy. We all have only so much energy to expend every day, right, guys? So we have to choose where we expend it. And I'm choosing to expend it on finding opportunity, regardless what happens. Um, finding the opportunity to grow and benefit um, others in some way. Maybe just by saying hi and checking in. So I just wanted you guys to know I was here. And know that I'm thinking of all of you. And I know that it's difficult, but uh, just a reminder that, you know, uh, we can come together as people regardless of the outcome. It doesn't really matter. Coming together as people is irrelevant um, to who the president is. It just has to do with us individual as people. So let's just be people today, <laughs> you know, and let's just all love each other and appreciate each other and not really worry about who voted for what or who believes in what. Let's just believe in each other. That's kind of how I'm taking this. That's my personal opinion. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I hope you guys are um, keeping an open mind today. Pull away from that phone. You know how I feel about that phone. <laughs> Forget it. It's almost better to just wait three days and then check it, right? Because it's going to change so much over the next couple days anyway. Why are we worrying about it? Is anyone going to a spa or like going out of town or taking a vacation or anything? That's kind of my instinct. Do any of you have that instinct? Like when you get kind of stressed out, you just have an instinct to run? I kind of do. And I used to do that. I used to go, okay, I'm stressed out. I'm going to go to California for a weekend or I'm going to, you know, go somewhere. But now it's so hard with travel restrictions and stuff. I haven't ran anywhere, you know, so I can't really run. <laughs> Vic says, let's be people. Uh, yeah, Shih Tzu, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, Matthew. So, any other tips for anyone? Any else? Anyone else do something today just to kind of remove yourself from the situation to take care of you today? Share it. Let's come together as a community. I will be back, you know, every day this week. In fact, I'll open up to questions right now. If you guys have any questions, you can. I can do a short question and answer session. I am going to do a formal Q&A as, as anticipated on Friday this week. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what I'll talk about. We'll see what I wake up wanting to talk about. But, um, but uh, if any of you have any questions or if I've helped you in any way, you feel like this is helpful, just to know that, you know, there are other ways to look at this. However, I can help you. Uh, that's why I'm here. I showed up for you guys today because um, I know it's a very uncertain time. Nobody likes uncertainty, right? I see some familiar faces out there, people that I know that I haven't seen in a long time. So nice to see all of you or at least see your names. Watching my life <laughs> or my live. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I feel like if we can be kind, then it spreads to others. 100% agree with you. <clears throat> it's real easy to divide. It's real easy to be angry. <clears throat> That's an emotion that comes very easily. Um, it's real easy to divide. It's real easy to be angry. It's real easy to get mad at people that vote differently from you or that think differently from you. But that's the easy route. I think the, the part that all of us can learn from this, just like we've learned from COVID, just like we've learned from other life events, even before my time or other people's time, is we learn that as people, we have a power to come together and be together and accept each other as we are. And that's really all that we can do in this moment right? Good morning. Anything on borderline diabetics? Jeff, that's a great question. Um, I do have an article at drpingle.com. I will um, put it below your question um, so you can read about it. Um, diabetes has a huge inner, there's an intertwine between stress and diabetes. So the stress aspect, the adrenal fatigue aspect definitely needs to be looked at with diabetes. There's also um, a lot of different diets that are proposed for diabetes. I tend to find that plant-based diets do a lot 
um, more work for diabetics than say a heavy meat based diet because what you want to look at is inflammatory markers you want to look at keeping minerals um, at a proper level Jeff so what happens with diabetes and with sugar changes is you use you lose a lot of electrolyte imbalance as well and that can cause mo more problems so stress is an important thing to consider looking at plants looking at your trace minerals making sure you're taking trace minerals um, making sure that you're exercising keeping your inflammatory markers low I have a lot of people that may hang at that borderline diabetic and they stay there for a very long time and they don't continue to go up. And I think if it's a, st if it's a stable borderline and it's not going up and down and the hemoglobin A1C is holding stable, you're doing quite a lot. Um, the next level would be to look at things like alpha lipoic acid, liver support, exercise, tighter diet management, and absolutely stress response, Jeff. So I hope that helps. I will send a... Um, link below your comment with an article as well and then i did do a live on diabetes somewhat recently as well which might be even of more help um does that help does that help you a little bit jeff and good to see you very good to see you i always love seeing your name um got something over on let's see how can i help my granddaughter get through her quarantine while in college right <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> I've had a few people that have had that have had to quarantine, but they um, they don't accept negative tests. So like the CDC says 10 days, right? But colleges are saying two weeks. So even if you go 10 days and you test negative, they're still not letting you come back, which is ridiculous. So I don't know. I guess you just remind her that it's only two weeks. It, it's two weeks in the whole scheme of things. Um, you know, maybe it's a time to catch up on other things. Uh, gratitude. Uh, it's tough, right? I hear you. I don't. I think um, attitude is so important, and I think the young people are having a really hard time with this. Um, you know, it's kind of that now age where it's a very selfish age in general, right? It's like they're learning who they are, what they're about, their lifestyle, what they're thinking, and then we're like, oh, quarantine for two weeks. It's tough, but it is only two weeks, right? I think it's a good time to teach kids about hobbies and how to get off their phone, <laughs> right? I hope that helps. Uh, read a novel, hey, post in a book or workout always releases stress. Yeah, reading is great. Um, reading is a great option. Workouts are a great option. Those are great suggestions. Anything you can do to take your brain away from the screen. Kathy's been gardening and exercising. Um, that's great. Awesome. Um, I need to get out to my garden today. Um, oh, I see. Read a novel and get lost in a book. Yeah, I'm with you. I hear you. Um, over here, what's up? Getting coffee going and smoothie made for the day. Just fed the kitty and they're both back asleep, right? The cats aren't noticing. <laughs> the cats aren't noticing the stress. They're like, hey, let's take it easy. Um, Lori is on edge. Um, let's, well, Lori wrote a lot here. Oh my goodness. Um, watching Dr. Pingle, prayer and faith, right? Maintaining a sense of humor. Great tip. Maintain a sense of humor. Right? I mean, really. Um, watching a dry bar comedy. Okay. Very good. Volunteering. Very good. Ignoring the negative. Accentuating the positive. Gratitude. Um, cry tears and acknowledge struggles. You know, uh, Lori, these are all great suggestions because I think once we acknowledge where we're struggling, we can come to a better acceptance. It's kind of that thing I said earlier about uncertainty. When you're uncertain, that's more, that's, that's, that's where it becomes difficult. If you have a certainty, um, then you can reframe it. Then you can look at it and say, okay, it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't really what I wanted, but you know what? We're going to make the best of it. We're going to make the best of the situation. And I think that's what I teach my kids. And I figure I should learn by what I teach my kids. I teach my kids to accept, move forward, grow. Uh, you know, when they face adversity, they face change. They have to figure out a way to survive through it. And I think that's an important lesson. So those are some great things. Um, and then Lori's going into how these have helped. Um, I so appreciate it. It looks like you've been through a lot. And I'm so grateful for you to be here and so grateful that you're sharing your story with other people. Lori, I think that's fantastic. It touches my heart um, that people show up and uh, find um, beauty and love from these lives. So thank you. You keep it up. Everything will be okay. You keep those tips. You keep doing what you can to help others. And we will survive, right? 
Um, Jim is asking about how to overcome rheumatoid. Sorry, guys. Whenever someone tells me a personal story about their struggles, it always gets me. <laughs> it's that hard, I guess. Um, you guys are talking today. I didn't think you would. I thought it would be a quick live, but hey, I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, how to overcome rheumatoid arthritis. The biologics I'm on are cost prohibitive. Isn't that crazy? $65,000 annual to take those drugs, right, Jim? That's crazy. Um, yeah, uh, there is quite a lot on rheumatoid arthritis. A lot of it has to do with diet. I don't know how your diet is now, if you've modified your diet and lifestyle, your stress response. Um, my program talks a lot about autoimmunity and reducing stress for autoimmunity. A lot of my articles lean towards that. Jim, I do have an article on autoimmunity um, and stress. I can post that after the live for you. Um, I think uh, lifestyle factors make a huge difference. Uh, there are quite a lot of herbs and nutrients used for rheumatoid arthritis as well. Most of my autoimmune clients, particularly rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, um, really see a massive improvement by supporting their adrenal glands, their nutrition, and their stress management. Um, it may not reduce it 100%, but definitely holds them stable. Um, and I've had people that have stayed on biologics. I have some that come off, uh, depending on where they're at, but they've all had to uh, really address those particular um, parts of their life. So I don't know if you've dealt, dove into that a lot uh, with lifestyle management, but if you have a naturopath in your area, that would be where I would go uh, with it to really hone in on the lifestyle changes that uh, you can make. Okay. Um, coffee drinkers, my favorite coffee, Cassie Cielo is back in season at Starbucks. There you go. Hot cup with a scoop of plant-based vanilla ice cream. All right. Sounds fun. My, we went out for ice cream the other day with my kids just to kind of get out of the house and uh, my husband ordered a root beer float and the kids were like, whoa. It's funny, like we grew up on root beer floats, but they were like, wow, what's that? <laughs> kind of fun. So you're welcome, Jim. I hope that helps you a lot. Any digestive enzymes that I recommend? So I can't give a bunch of great brand names. There was Sometimes I rattle them off. Um, but, uh, just make sure that they're a nutraceutical, that they came from, you know, a site that comes from professionals and such. Um, I will have one ultimately in my line. I have one formulated, picked out, um, but I haven't, um, pulled the trigger on it yet. Um, you're looking for betaine. You're looking for a lot of different enzymes in it. Um, it you're not going to find it at Walgreens or CVS. You're going to have to go to a health food store. Make sure that it's not full of a bunch of additives. Uh, like I say, with pretty much any supplement, anytime you look at the label, if it's full of a bunch of inactive ingredients, it's probably not the one you want. So you want it to be as pure as possible. Um, I wish I could give a bunch of brand names. There's limitations with my um, license on that. I'm not affiliated with them, but I can't mention them. I don't know. It's kind of silly. Um, Lori says also, be brave. If you are on the tracks but hear that train whistle in the distance, don't panic. The train hasn't hit yet. Dare it. Very good advice. <clears throat> I always live by, if I'm, if I'm just living comfortably and nothing's challenging me, then my life is very boring. I think the only way we grow is by having things happen to us that we don't want. Uh, because we learn how to handle it, how to, how to deal through trouble, how to deal through pain, how to deal through loss. And I think those are very valuable skills to have as a human. I think it makes you more human. Um, and I think it helps you connect to other people. <clears throat> so I think the way that you face challenge and change really defines you as a human. And that's my own personal mantra and philosophy. Whenever I start to feel down, I start to feel depressed, I start to think, okay, this isn't going the way I want it to. Um, I just have to change my perspective and say, all right, well, this is a challenge. Let's, let's bring it on. What do we got? You know, let's come above it. Let's arrive above it. Let's see if we can beat it. Apparently the other route was too easy. So now I'm being given a challenge and I got to figure it out. And I think, um, I think if more people took that attitude, we'd all in general be a lot happier and we'd also be able to support each other regardless of differences a lot easier if we just recognize that everybody has challenges in their own right and how we overcome them. Uh, it really defines who we are as people. Um, and to discount other people's challenges or have your challenges discounted is never helpful in the long run. I think we all just need to realize we all deal with crap all day long and how we deal with it um, is important and how we respect others for dealing with what they're dealing with um, is important as well. Um, that's what I teach my kids. I got a lot of hearts on Instagram on that one. You guys agree? <laughs> 
Vic says, learn from your mistakes. I agree with you there. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here and sharing your story. Okay, I really, I really do. Um, people that share their story, people that share their, their knowledge, their experiences with others, it really touches my heart. That's why it always makes my eyes tear up because I think that that's how we learn and that's how we grow. And um, uh, we don't always share everything that we've gone through. I certainly haven't shared everything that I've gone through. I share a lot of it, probably more than I probably should. But, um, uh, you know, I think that's how we learn is by trusting that other people are going to take our heart with, with open arms and warmth. So just take other people's heart with open arms and warmth and you'll probably be okay. Um, would you mind sharing, saying your link for the supplements? For my supplement line? Absolutely. Uh, TotalHealthApothecary.com. You can also, anytime guys, go to DrPingle.com. Most people remember my name, so DrPingle.com and there's links to everything. Um, I did just put my book at TotalHealthApothecary.com and my program at TotalHealthApothecary.com. So I added some more products there. Uh, so check that out. Uh, if you need a book to read, I have one. Um, and it's on stress and how stress impacts the body. In fact, going back to Jeff's question too earlier about diabetes, I have a whole chapter on diabetes in my book. Um, and stress and diabetes in there and, and things to consider and things to ask your doctor and all of that. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, Nurtured nature, thank you. Oh, yes, super enzymes now. Good, I'm glad you guys are suggesting brands. I can't do that as easily as you guys can. I'm getting married at the end of December and I've never taken birth control. I was told I need to start taking it two months before I get married, is that true? Well, I don't think it has to do whether you get married, it has to do with whether you're doing something else, right? <laughs> um, do you mean how long do you have to be on it to provide contraception? Um, I think the guideline is two to three months, um, if that's what you're asking. Uh, and congratulations. That's awesome. I've been married almost 20 years. Crazy. Um, it's insane to me. And we've known each other longer than that, so it seems like forever, but 20 years. I never really thought I'd get to 20 years. I don't feel like I'm old enough to have gotten to 20 years married, but I'm approaching it. My husband and I, and I think um, we were together just a couple years before that, so uh, it's been a long time. It's hard to, to imagine, right? For those of you that have been married a long time, is it weird? It's kind of weird for me. I was like, wow, we've been together a long time. I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> so, all right, guys, well, I won't keep you much longer. I do appreciate it. I really uh, didn't expect so much engagement today. Um, I really thought you guys might be off doing other things. So I do appreciate you being here and I do appreciate you sharing your feelings and how you're doing. And just remember, stay positive. It's okay. It's just an election. It doesn't, it doesn't change who you are in here and who you, what you pass to other people. That's, that doesn't matter. The president doesn't impact how you treat other people. So just treat people with kindness and love, okay? And uh, thank you. He is a lucky dude, but I'm a lucky woman too. He's a good man. Um, so yeah, 20 years, that's crazy. I know, nuts. So we're moving into the holiday season. Try to stay open and loving and uh, we'll all get through this together. I'll be back here tomorrow. Um, I probably, I look 12, I look 12 years old, wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, no. But, um, you know, I like being in my 40s. I'm enjoying it. I don't have a problem with it. I, I'm not. I used to think that it would be worse getting older, but I feel like as I get older, I face stress and adversity better. I feel like I've grown more as a human the older I get and more experience I can share, the more I can offer others. So I'm not, you know, I'm not upset about it. But thank you. Is there a good gynecologist you can recommend? Are you in Phoenix? Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty in Phoenix. Is that where you are? I'm going to write down your name. I'll private message you someone in Phoenix. If I can. Let me know if you're in Phoenix. Only when you draw eyes. <laughs> I'm not sure I get that one, Vic. <laughs> but anyway, um... Anywho, hey, I'll be back tomorrow. I probably will have a health topic tomorrow. I guess it kind of depends. If I feel like people can't really handle it, we'll come up with something lighthearted, maybe cook something. I don't know. Um, but thanks to all of you for being here. Thank you for your questions. Um, well, I'll mention her name, Red Ruby. I like Dr. Kelly Roy. Check her out. 
I'm hoping to bring her on to a live. I've talked to her about it. She's great. Kelly Roy. Naturopaths here in Arizona do a lot of gynecology as well if you're just looking for well visits, but if you're looking for an actual gynecologist, uh, check that one out, okay? Uh, you are so welcome, Tommy. You're, I'm grateful for all of you. You guys have a great day today, okay? Stay positive, stay open, go put your feet in the grass, go outside, get away from the phone, get away from the media coverage. We can't trust anything we see at the moment anyway. Let's just take the day off. Let's go do something else and check back in tomorrow, okay? Okay, thanks to all of you. Uh, I'm thinking of all each and every single one of you today. So stay positive, stay open, spread the love. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Dr. Trisha Pingle with your check-in. Bye.